right, blessings and welcome. Glad that you could join me today. I have an exciting word for you today. I'm just going to give a few minutes uh, for some folks to come on. And if, if you're viewing this uh, live or whether you're viewing this on a replay, I ask that you would share. Let me get the word out. Um, for those who don't know, my name is Darnell. I'm the founder and overseer of Moshua Ministries. Um, check us out on Facebook. We also have a YouTube page that's DB Moshua. On that page, uh, we pretty much um, do a lot of music as well as word. Uh, I would ask that you check that out if 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 you would you know if you would like to learn how to play as well as uh, some words. I see you, Omega. Thanks for watching. Um, and so, I started a series concerning getting back on track. And what it is is that we've entered into the sixth month of the year. And, and during this time, it's a, it's a good time that we begin to examine ourselves, examine where we're at and what course we're on. Uh, because, of, you know, as we entered into the beginning of the year, we entered it into it with with hopes, with goals, with dreams, with direction, believing that we was going to have new life and new things and new blessings. And, and sometimes um, we may have missed it. We may have not gotten off course and we may not have, we may not be at the place where we think we should be. And so I'm going to be sharing several keys so that we can get back on track, you know, because there's some things that I was able to accomplish uh, in the first six months of this year or first five months. And as we enter the second half, there's still some things that, uh, you know, I may not be seeing the fruitfulness in it or I may be struggling or may not think I'm where I should be in those things. And, and so uh, we just want to do a spiritual checkup, right? just to make sure that we get back in um, line with what God would have for us. And so this is the day two of seven keys that I'm sharing to get back on track. All right, so these are, in the first uh, series, in the first uh, lesson, we looked at recommitting. That is recommitting to seeking him. So the first thing that we looked at, uh, and if you didn't see that, you can go back and look um, um, look on the page. I'm going to leave that up. The first thing we looked at was recommitting or making the decision again to seek God, to seek him out, to see what it is that he has for us. We make a decision, all right? As an act of our will, we decide we're going to stand firm. We're not going to, we're not going to waver. We're not going to be double-minded. Uh, we're going to make the decision. We're going to recommit again. Uh, uh, to uh, seeking him. And so the next thing I want to share today is after we recommit, we need to reconnect. Okay, after we've made the decision, after we've made the choice, after we, uh, as an act of our will, decided that this is what we're going to do, we need to take the first step and reconnect. All right, so reconnect is it's like it's like you have uh, access to power, or it's like you 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 uh, you have a cell phone, and and your cell phone was fully charged, but you've been going about the day, you've been going about your business, uh, you've been using it, you've been you've been having to uh, do certain tasks, and and the power is wearing down, and if you get to a certain point. If you don't recharge, if you don't reconnect, if you don't replug in, if you don't get connected back to the source, eventually the, you're going to power down. And so it's just like that in the spirit. As we as believers, we need to reconnect. We need to recharge. We need to refuel. We need to get reignited. We need to uh, uh, reconnect to the power source and so that we can run on full and not power down. Not power down on our walk. Not power down on our belief system. Not power down on our direction. Not power down on our course. Not power down on our goal. But we can be fully charged and ready uh, for what comes our way. And so there's several ways that we can reconnect. Okay? And I'm just going to share. share a, I'm not going to keep you long. I'm just going to share some ways that we can reconnect. All right? 
one of the one of the ways that we can reconnect is reconnect through prayer. Reconnect through prayer, and so Jesus got up early and he he and went to solitude places and he prayed. He prayed alone. And so what was he doing? He was reconnecting with the Father. All right? He was getting away from everyone, getting away from his ministry, getting away from his disciples, getting away from his family, getting away from the multitude, getting away from the crowd, and he was going and connecting, reconnecting with the Father through prayer, recharging his so, recharging his spirit, allowing the Father and the connection with him to, to, to put him in a place where he was ready to go and fulfill the assignment that was on him, where he was ready to go and do the thing that he was placed on the earth to do. And so, this was necessary, and he did this often. And so, we need to take that as an example. We need to often go and reconnect, all right? We need to plug back into the source so that we can be charged and we can be fueled and that we can be ready for the assignment, for the task, and we can get back on track and back on course. Sometimes we may get off course, we may take a detour, or we may have to go a long way around, or we may have taken some wrong steps and went in the wrong direction. But if you reconnect with the Father, if you reconnect through prayer, if you reconnect through fellowship with Him, You'll find out where you are, and you can get the instructions to get back on course. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you people of God? And so we need to reconnect with the Father. We need to reconnect in prayer. Another way that we can reconnect is we need to reconnect through the Word of God. We need to, we need to fill ourselves up with the Word. And so... The, the, the word says that man shall not live by bread alone, right? But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so like men, he says we shouldn't live on bread alone because bread is only going to sustain you physically. All right, bread is going to give you fuel. fuel. Food is going to give you fuel for your physical body. And if you don't get fuel for your physical body, you're going to get tired. You're going to get lethargic. You're going to get weak. You're going to not going to have the strength or the energy to, to go. And so just like you need food, just like you need bread for your physical body, he says that you shouldn't live on that alone, but you shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so the word that proceeds from the mouth of God is fuel for your spirit, fuel for your soul. It's fuel for your destiny, fuel for your course. It's, it will reignite you. It will recharge you. And as you plug in uh, with the Father through prayer and in the word, you'll get recharged. You'll get repowered, you'll power up again. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, people of God? And so we need to reconnect through the Word. All right, another way that we can reconnect is by abiding. By abiding. And an example is, is this. It's like, I'm married to a lovely wife, my wife Evangelist Daphne. And I, I live with her. I abide with her. Okay, I'm not visiting her. Uh, I spend life with her. I live life with her day in and day out. And so I need to make sure that... It, so there's a difference. There's a big difference between abiding with someone and just dating with someone. All right, so I, I can't just... I can't expect... Uh, to to know somebody to to have a a, a a vibrant fulfilling relationship with with someone if I only spend time with them once a week if I only spend time with them when I get in a jam if I only spend time with them when it's convenient if I only spend time with them when I need something if I only spend time with them when it's convenient, all right? And so, and so we need to learn how to abide 
or that is live in Christ. And so John, let me just read this, John 15 chapter. Jesus put it something like this. He said, you know, 15, you know, I'm going to read 4 and 5. He said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And so he abides in me, bears fruit. And so if you want to bear fruit, you want to stay on track, you want to fulfill your purpose, you want to, you want to live this life and walk out, you want to, you want to fulfill your destiny, you want, to, you want to walk in victory, you have to abide in him and then you can bear, then you can produce the life. Then his life can be produced through you. It says he is the vine. And, and we are the branches, and so and so the branch all it, it would is connected to the vine, and it's receiving its life. It's receiving its nutrients. It's receiving the force and its strength because it's connected. It's abiding, and it's not just visiting. It's not coming and going. It's continuously connected, and as a result of that, it can bear fruit. It can produce. It can, it, it can be, it can multiply and be fruitful. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you, people of God? And so, Jesus goes on to say, without me, you can do nothing. That you can do nothing of lasting value. You can do nothing that will uh, uh, be beneficial. You can't do or fulfill your goals and your purpose and the plan that he's ordained for you if you're not connected to him. And so we have to make sure that we are connected and, and, and that we are abiding in him, living in him, and we're not just dating him. All right, so we're not just dating him, that we're spending time with him day in and day out. And so those are several things we need to do uh, to make sure that we reconnect, all right. And so, just to just to uh, just to give a quick recap, we need to to get back on track, to get back on course. We need to reconnect with God through prayer. We need to reconnect through the Word, and we need to reconnect by abiding in Him. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, right now, I just pray for your people, oh God. I pray, oh God, that as, as, as I share and as I release these seven things that you're giving me to get back on track, to get back on course, where your people can get back uh, and, and, and get going for the rest of this year, for the second half, I just declare right now, in Jesus' name, that you are giving them second half strategies. That you are giving them second half anointings. That you are giving them second half instructions. That you are giving them second half power. And that you are giving them second half ability to get the job done. And Father, I pray that they, we would get back on track, oh God. That we would recommit to you. That we would reconnect to you. And that we will walk this thing out in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we give you thanks, and we receive this by faith in Jesus' name. Those that agree, say amen. And so, listen, I'm going to share with seven keys that God gave me. So, we did the first two that was recommit and reconnect. I'll be coming on later this week, probably Thursday, um, unless the Lord leads me to do it tomorrow, to share the next key. So, what I ask that if you're viewing this, that you would share this, if it, if it helped you at all, turn on your notifications. If, if, if this is something that you think you, you can be blessed by, uh, um, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, check out the YouTube channel, too. The YouTube is DB Moshua. The, uh, the Facebook ministry page is Moshua Ministries. So I'll be back with you again later uh, this week to share the rest of the keys to get on track and to walk this thing out and be successful. Blessings. I see you, James.